Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Spirit. This will be Part 6, Chapter 6, entitled Growing. Years pass. Izuku and Oboro grow closer, and Izuku finishes elementary and middle school. Hitoshi goes to school with them now, and Izuku Katsuki and Hitoshi have a budding friend group. When Izuku turns 14, he starts talking to his parents about the UA entrance exams, knowing Katsuki and Hitoshi will be taking the exams, too. I've already passed these exams once, Obro grins as they train together. We'll do it again. Izuku has been training in his off time with Aizawa and Hizashi on mainly quirkless combat since they can't really help with his ghost powers. Izuku doesn't feel comfortable letting any other ghost besides Obro possess him, but he does get better at being able to tell ghosts apart from living people. Kenji, the poltergeist from the Cork Center, disappears one afternoon while Izuku is in for his yearly checkup. There was no dramatic exit, no shimmer in the air. He was simply, and suddenly gone. Like he never had existed. Izuku has no proof, but he just knows Kenji has moved on to whatever comes after being a ghost, and he sees the ghost cat Merlin is gone too. The little girl on the playground with the red jacket is still there. Izuku learns her name is Kayo, and she was murdered when she was ten years old. He talks to her a lot, but she starts appearing less and less over the years. One afternoon, a police officer solves her cold case and arrests her murderer, and Izuku never sees her again. Other ghosts fade in and out of his life throughout the years, but Oboro is consistent. He's almost always there, only disappearing for a few days at a time here and there. Oboro never talks to Izuku about where he goes when he vanishes, but he's grateful for having an older brother who's almost always around. Now they're training in one of Yue's gyms with his dad's permission. He and Oboro practicing spirit possession. Oboro knows a lot more hand-to-hand -hand combat than Izuku, and Izuku finds when Oboro possesses him, he's able to manipulate his body in ways that Izuku doesn't know how to. This is a lot easier than when you were six, Oboro grins, Izuku's eyes shining white as Oboro possesses him. I can't tell if it's because we're closer to the same age now or if it's because we've had so much practice. Izuku just grins as Oboro moves his body around, feeling their energies fuse closer and closer. It's getting to the point where he and Oboro can almost control Izuku's body at the same time. Izuku feels closer and closer to something every time they practice this, but his parents warn him not to push it too far. The entrance exams arrive, and Izuku and Hitoshi say goodbye to their parents, all three of whom wish them luck, and go to watch the exams with the other teachers up in the announcer's booth. They've already gone through the written exams earlier that day, so it's only the practical exams left. What do you think we'll be doing? Katsuki asks, kicking the ground and looking determined as he rubs his wrists. Some kind of fight. Don't know, Hitoshi shrugs, leaning against a wall. I'm guessing something physical. My mom didn't give me any hints. My dad's didn't either, Izuku sighs. And Obro won't tell me anything. Says it's cheating. Ugh, oh, come on, man. Katsuki grumbles to the space next to Izuku where he assumes Obro is standing. Been hanging around us like a creepy fuck since we were kids and you won't even spill? Obro laughs, putting a hand on Izuku's shoulder. He's always so angry, like a tiny rabbit dog. Tell him that for me. No way, Izuku laughs at Obro before turning to his friends. Good luck, guys. They line up with the rest of the examinees and Izuku hears the announcement for the exam to start. It turns out they're fighting robots to earn points. Izuku mainly works to complete the exam quirkless, not wanting to use any of his possession energy if he doesn't have to, until he sees a giant robot walking towards them. Oh yeah, I remember these, Obro laughs in his ear. Here, Izu, let me take the wheel for a second. Izuku nods and Obro steps into his body, Izuku's hair changing to wispy light blue and his eyes glowing white. Obro runs them over to a large robot, where they're both dismayed to see another examinee, a girl with brown hair, about to get stepped on. Help me, she calls out, and Izuku tugs on something inside him. Whoa! He hears Obro gasp, and Izuku suddenly understands. He brings his hands together, taking over control of his body with Obro still inside. He uses the energy he feels to summon clouds, bringing a large amount of them up and around the robot's head, stopping it effectively in its tracks while he pulls the girl out of the rubble. Wow, your quirk is incredible, the girl says, looking around at the light, fluffy clouds that surround them. You're amazing! Up in the announcer's booth, Aizawa, Hizashi, and Amuri watch stunned as Izuku makes clouds cover up the robot's line of sight. No one says anything for a while, the three of them just staring at the screen, mouth agape. 
Was that? Izashi stammers after a moment. Did he just use Oboro's quirk? Oboro Shirakumo, another teacher asks, eyebrows raising. I thought that quirk looked familiar. That's your kid, right? Izuku, the one with the ghost quirk. Yeah, Aizawa says, shocked. I had no idea the two of them were working on that, using Oboro's quirk that way. I had no idea Izuku could do that. Back on the ground, the girl is thanking Izuku profusely as the exam ends, Izuku telling her it's not a big deal and he's happy to help. She waves goodbye, heading to the exit, as Oboro pulls out of him. That was wild, Oboro grins, eyes widening when he looks at Izuku. Whoa, kid. Check out your reflection. Izuku turns to look at a shiny piece of metal that's been flung off of a robot, eyes widening with shock. Oboro is out of his body, no longer possessing him, but Izuku's hair is still Oboro's color, a light blue. Izuku's eyes are lighter, too, more of a blue-green color now. Wow, Oboro says gently. It looks like it just changed your body. Mine's still the same. Sorry, kid. I have no idea how that happened. I kind of like it, Izuku grins. Come on, let's go find my dad's. I don't think it's permanent, Izuku says, looking up at his blue-tinged hair as he tries to explain what happened to his parents. I think it's a side effect of using Oboro's quirk. It felt so cool to use it. Izashi and Aizawa share a worried look. Katsuki is leaning against the wall of the announcer's booth, watching as Namuri congratulates Satoshi for his completion of the exam, as Izuku talks to his dad's. Kid, I'm sure it did, but this is... worrying to us, Izashi says quietly. We know you and Oboro are close, but we don't know how far the spirit possession goes. What happens if Oboro accidentally takes you over entirely, and you don't know how to get yourself back? Your dad and I can't lose you too, Izuku. Izuku looks a little sheepishly at Oboro, who's sighing and rubbing his forehead. Zashi has a point, Izu, Oboro says eventually. We should probably cool it for a while. Hey, real quick, I want to see something. Try and summon a cloud. But Nissan, I can't. Izuku says to Oboro, watching Izashi track Izuku's eyeline to his right. Not unless you're possessing me. I know, just humor me, Oboro says, and Izuku closes his eyes, trying to tug on the energy he had felt during the entrance exam. Strangely, he feels something tug inside of him, and Izuku gasps, catching sight of his reflection in a mirror across the room. His eyes are glowing white, even though Oboro isn't possessing him, and there's a tiny baseball-sized cloud in his hands. Izuku stares in shock, looking at Oboro, who has one firm hand on Izuku's shoulders. Seems like I just need to touch you now to channel it, Oboro grins. This is really cool. Izuku lets the cloud dissipate, smiling up at his parents. I can still use his quirk, even though he's just got his hand on my shoulder. He's not even possessing me. Izuku, you look weird as fuck, Kotsky curses, walking over. You're not possessed right now, right? Izuku shakes his head the new blue strands of hair falling into his eyes. Nope. I think over a spirit kind of stained my body. Sorry to put it that way, Nissan. Nah, it's cool, Obro says. But enough about me, kid. You need to go celebrate getting through your exams. Aizawa just sighs, rubbing his forehead. You, kid, are going to take years off of my life. Come on, let's go. Bakugo, you want to come to ours for dinner? Nah, sorry, I've got to get home, Katsuki says. Izuku, try not to get killed by a ghost. Hitoshi, see you later. Katsuki leaves, and Izuku says goodbye to Hitoshi and Namuri, following his parents out to their car. It's a quiet ride home, and Izuku can sense that both of them are feeling anxious. Oboro's not with them right now, but Izuku's hair is still blue and his eyes are still blue-green. I'm sorry for worrying you, Izuku says quietly from the back seat. Oboro's not here right now, but he is too. We didn't know this would happen, or that I could use his quirk. It was a surprise. Aizawa sighs from the driver's seat, while Izashi turns around to look at Izuku, concern in his eyes. We know, Izu. Your dad and I are both really proud of you for what you did today, Izashi says gently. We're just worried. It's hard for us, since we don't really understand your powers. It makes us anxious any time something like this happens. We're not mad or upset with you, kiddo. I know, Izuku mumbles. I'm still sorry. Does my hair... Does it look bad? No, Aizawa says quietly. It looks good, kid. Don't worry about that. A week later, Izuku finds out he, Kotsky, and Hitoshi have all been accepted to UA. 
and they're going to be in Aizawa's homeroom 1A class. Hitoshi will have to get used to taking art from his mom, and Izuku having most of his classes with Aizawa and English with Hazashi. It'll be a bit weird, but Izuku's more excited than anything else. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 6 of Spirit. Chapter 7 will be up next. I hope you all are still enjoying this fic, and as always, thank you so much for listening.